So if we look at different types of RNA, um, there are three main ones that I think are worth mentioning. First, we have something called the messenger RNA. That is the postman coming from DNA. We're reading the genetic information in DNA, turning it over to a single strand RNA. It's quite unstructured. That molecule is then transported into a factory. That factory is actually a protein itself, and it's called a ribosome. And then this big ribosome, you have a mix of protein parts and some RNA, actually. So this is a pro large protein structure that contains some RNA that has a, both a structural and functional role inside the molecule. And that RNA is typically called rRNA, or ribosomal RNA. I'm not going to talk that much about it. The third type of DNA is that once you get this message RNA coming with the recipe for the proteins we're going to make, we need the actual protein building blocks. And this so-called transfer RNA are small triplets that, sorry, the transfer RNA are amino acid, it's binding amino acids and recognizing certain triplets. The complication here, it actually contains more than three bases. It's a, fairly large chunk of RNA, and matching up triplets in the messenger RNA to binding the correspondent triplets as part of the transfer RNA, and then building this nascent chain of the proteins that come out. I'm going to show you each of these in sequence. The messenger RNA is the most difficult one to show because it doesn't really have any structure. But again, when I'm recording this, message RNA is pretty much on everybody's lips, although you might not have thought of it that way because messenger RNA is the way we can produce vaccines. It's a new type of vaccine. Instead of just injecting material where we might have grown viruses and eggs or something, we can take a small part of a protein. Why not the spike protein that I introduced before? And if I now take a genetic sequence that would correspond to the spike protein, what if we could inject this in your cells and then have your cells produce this protein and now that this protein is produced in your cells, your, anti your immune descent will start to recognize that this is a strange protein, and this protein should be fought, and then let's create antibodies against these protein parts, and then we're basically kick-starting your immune system so that when you're actually exposed to the real virus, it will already recognize the spike protein. That's a great idea. There was only one problem. Your cells are going to recognize this RNA that it's a strange species and it's going to kick out the RNA even before it can introduce something. So Kathleen Carico, who was a researcher in Germany at the time, uh, she came up with a very smart idea that if you replace something called uracil, which is basically, uh, it's a, uh, it's one of, the, uh, it's the, Uridine is the base, the combination of the uracil base and the ribose, the sugar. If you replace that with something called pseudouridine, it's going to be silent. It won't kickstart your immune system. I don't know exactly why. But with this discovery, we realize if she introduces that artificial base, she then can inject these things into your cells and get this process working. And that was a very, I would almost say, minor discovery. They spent 10 years trying to improve this until COVID-19 hit. And this was the method that both Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna designed their vaccine successfully by. And you know what? This is what a bunch of us is going to have injected the next few months. This is the entire sequence of the Pfizer, BioNTech vaccine. And you, will, you can actually see the bases here, um, if you magnify this at least. But do you see what it says? It says A, G, C, and then Psi instead of you, because Psi is this pseudo-uridine base, so it's a modified RNA nucleotide. Pretty amazing. I wouldn't have think that this text string would save humanity.